in the days after his resurrection. And whenever you talk about the teach or talk about the kingdom of God, you inevitably must talk about the people of the kingdom, the church. And this is really how the book of Acts plays out. You read the first few chapters, Jesus is teaching the disciples about the kingdom, he ascends into heaven, and the kingdom mandate is given, what we call the Great Commission. And then the rest of the book of Acts, we see then these kingdom communities form all across the Roman world that are centered around the worship of the Christ. And these are exemplified by their practice of baptism and communion. That, that becomes like these kingdom communities all across the Roman world. And these kingdom communities are called churches. And that's also the basic structure of the New Testament as a whole. You know, you read the Gospels, Jesus talks a lot about the kingdom of God, about his kingdom. But then when you get to the epistles or the letters of the apostles, like Romans, Galatians, all those places, they're all written to the churches. The language used is about the church and what it means to be God's people, instruction on how to have fellowship with God and how to have fellowship with one another. And this is really important to grasp, okay, because we can't separate salvation, trusting in King Jesus, entering into his kingdom, being a citizen of heaven, from being a part of his church, being a part of one of his community of worshipers, meaning you can't say you belong to Christ and not be a part of his church, the people. That's just, that's not a reality. That's not how the Bible talks. And it's a great lie we've seen since the beginning of the apostles, and it's a great lie we see now even in our day. For instance, if you've ever heard someone defensively say,